Hey there, welcome to Four Wheels in a Seat, the best channel on YouTube to see new cars reviewed every week, in my personal opinion. I'm Alex Dalrymple, and if you hit subscribe, not only will I love you forever, but you will get the latest videos in the top of your feed each week as they're released. So, can you please do that? That would be awesome, and give me a like too if you enjoy the video. Today I'm back in a Peugeot, this time it's the 3008. I reviewed the plug-in hybrid version of this car last year and had a bit of a look at the outside of the car in that review. If you want to check it out, just click the link up there. But today, this is the GT Sport, which pretty much looks exactly the same and on the inside is the same, but powertrain, totally different. Obviously no electric motor in this car, it is purely petrol. Oh, and the other big difference, this car is about $25,000 cheaper than that one. So as I mentioned, this car is petrol powered with 133 kilowatts of power and 250 newton meters of torque generated from its 1.6 litre four cylinder turbo engine. Combined fuel economy comes in at a very frugal 5.6 litres per 100 kilometres. And that's all powered through a eight speed automatic transmission, which sends its power to the front wheels only. One thing that Peugeot do really well in all of their cars, and that is give them massive boots. And it's the same story here. We've got a 591 litre storage space, which if you knock down the back seats, extends to over 1600 litres. And that also leaves room for a space saver spare tyre under the floor. It's better than the plug-in hybrid version of this car, because obviously there's no battery under the floor to make room for. So storage space is huge. As it was was also huge in the Peugeot 308 station wagon that I reviewed last month. Peugeot really are the best at giving you loads of storage room in their cars which make them ideal for road trips. The interior of this car pretty much exactly the same as the plug-in hybrid version so it feels a bit luxe and it's a bit premium. We've got lots of soft touch materials and stitching and this really nice wood finish here on the centre portion of the dash. Uh, not much hard plastic to be found, in fact just right now I can't seem to find any. It's all a little bit soft and it feels premium and it looks really good. The centre console screen, the same 10 inch unit that we get in the plug-in hybrid version which looks pretty enough but unfortunately isn't great as far as usability goes. There's digital radio and the sound system sounds pretty good. Uh, the native navigation not so good, I'd stick with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto for that. And the image from the reversing and other cameras that are dotted around the car here are probably the lowest resolution I've seen in any car lately anywhere and in a car this at this price point that is actually pretty unacceptable. Under that we've got the signature piano style key shortcut buttons here for the center console screen and some more shortcut buttons for the uh, climate control system and the seat heating controls just underneath that. All important button for the central locking is also located here on the lower row of buttons. Uh, don't go looking for it on the armrest because you won't find it whenever you need to let a passenger into the car that's the button you're going to need to hit here in the middle. A nice big space for your phone underneath that with wireless phone charging. The USB inputs are hidden away in there as well. Uh, we've got a uh, big storage space here which is quite convenient to keep your wallet in and the very nice Peugeot gear shifter here which again is a little bit different, you know the French like to do things differently. It's an unusual shape but it's actually really nice to use once you get used to it. The lower console here finished with a uh, little bit of piano black and some nice chrome highlights, a couple of cup holders and under this dual flap lid here we have probably the world's deepest centre console bin. It is absolutely massive, in fact there's a light in there so you can see just how big it is. Uh, a little removable tray at the top there too. No head up display in this car but with the high mounted digital instrument cluster you probably don't need it anyway because it's right in your line of sight. I actually quite like this thing where they've got it sitting up above the wheel. Um, you can see it really clearly and uh, you know you don't really need to take your eyes off the road all that much to um, check your speed because it's in a nice big font there. A few different display modes available with the uh, digital instrument cluster, they all look really good. I like having navigation on personally, uh, the only problem with it is it doesn't show you street names of the streets around you, it only shows you the name of the street you're on. 
steering wheel I love. It's got a flat top, a flat bottom, and it's nice and small. You can kind of throw it around really easily. It has a really nice sporty feel to it. Yes, maybe because it's small, you have to do a little bit more work in terms of turning the wheel. Um, but you know what? That's no bad thing, really. And it just, I don't know, I really like this steering wheel. Some controls here for the sound system on the front. And uh, as I mentioned before, paddle shifters here. that are actually on the steering column, not attached to the wheel. Um, but I really haven't used them uh, at all while I've had this car, actually. And cruise control here on a separate stalk, uh, again, attached to the steering column. Moving on to the seating, uh, it's Nappa leather and feels really good. These seats are very comfortable. We've got an electric adjustment here for the driver and uh, along with a massage function. Sorry, front passengers, you miss out on that, but uh, that is a very nice feature indeed. Good lumbar support, sitting position, a little bit higher in the cabin perhaps, but that's okay because you've got a good view out the front, uh, good view all round really. Rear seat passengers will be comfortable in the Peugeot 3008 GT Sport as well with loads of room, more nice Nappa leather on the seats, nice view through the panoramic sunroof, two USB chargers in the centre console underneath the air conditioning vents and an armrest with cup holders as well. And I'm pleased to say that the driving experience of the Peugeot 3008 uh, adequately matches the level of comfort here in the cabin. It's a really nice car to drive. It's uh, very easy, very compliant. It uh, doesn't really have much in the way of body roll going around corners. It's quite agile and yeah, I actually really like it. There's uh, a few different drive modes, which are controlled by the button down here on the lower console. We've got Sport, Normal, and Eco. Um, Eco I haven't really touched at all, to be honest, because it's just boring. Normal is good, um, and Sport just makes everything a little bit too touchy for me. The accelerator gets a bit too keen, and the steering actually does feel like it gets a little bit heavier in Sport mode. Um, but the steering isn't overly light anyway, it has just a good feel, it's actually really quite well done. The suspension by the way in this car also feels pretty good as well. In sport mode there is also a little bit of augmented engine noise that comes through into the cabin and it just sounds so fake. It really makes this horrible robotic noise which... <laughs> doesn't really sound like an engine at all. And I think I've heard Peugeot do this in, uh, I think they did the same thing in their plug-in hybrid version of this car. And it's just unnecessary, really. The automatic engine start stop, which stops the engine when you're at the traffic lights to try and save petrol. Uh, I can't find a way to actually stop that from activating, which is a little bit annoying. I'm not a huge fan of these systems. Um, it just sort of makes the whole car shudder a little bit. It does stop doing that when you're in sport mode, but otherwise it's sort of on and off all the time. And it will also switch off the engine when you're traveling at really low speeds. Uh, I've noticed that the speedometer will record zero when the car is still moving just a little bit. And in that situation, it'll actually turn the engine off and you just feel everything kind of die. The power steering goes, um, and then when you put your foot on the accelerator, there is about a half a second delay between you doing that and the engine starting again, which when you're at a roundabout or something like that where timing is a little bit crucial, it's a bit annoying because it just feels like, oh, hang on, here's my little window to get through here on the roundabout. And I put my foot down and nothing happens. And it's like, oh, well, hang on, I've missed my, my, now there's a car coming, now I've got to stop. I don't really like these systems very much. I'd turn it off if I could. I'm sure there is a way to do it, but I can't find it. But the engine itself, even in normal mode, is very responsive and it's really great to drive around the city. This is a really nice car to live with. Let's just try out the uh, adaptive cruise control and see how easy that is to turn on. Um, I have not looked up anything about how to do this, so a little bit of button mashing going on. Cruise active. Yep, at 70, good, that's the speed limit here. Okay, that was relatively easy. The only thing is I actually don't know how I did it. So all up, I'm actually fairly impressed by the Peugeot 3008 GT Sport. I think this is actually a really good, well-made European small 
despite Peugeot calling it mid-size, this is actually really quite small compared to some other mid-size SUVs you'll find. But it is a really good car and I think it's a shame we don't see more of these on the road. So if you're in the market for a somewhat premium feeling getting towards the upper end luxe SUV, then this is definitely one to check out.